Hello everybody, my name is Sherry D. I'm a Valley Fever survivor of six years. This is my six year anniversary where I celebrate life. So cheers to you for joining me for just a few useful chips, tips that I've learned along my journey. Grab some water and join me. So basically this video is um, going to be posted on my Valley Fever Fungal and Recovery Facebook page. It's going to be posted on my Sherry D Shares YouTube link and feel free to share this to anybody that you think might find it useful. I am entitling this video, I have Valley Fever, now what? What do I do? So basically, the first thing that is the most important thing when you've been diagnosed with Valley Fever is to get your immune system strong and feed it as much as you can. So the number one thing in feeding and strengthening your immune system is water and rest. So those are my first two number one tips that I would suggest that we put into place after we've been diagnosed with valley fever or any other autoimmune disease for that matter. So when it comes to rest, this is what has worked for me. When I was first diagnosed with valley fever, I was so weak. I could barely climb stairs. I could barely shower. I couldn't drive. And so I was in bed for a good six months. So that is one of the most important things when it comes to recovering from valley fever is rest. So my tip, my Sherry D tip, is to designate your resting place, space, and time. So what I did, I literally would schedule in my rest time. For example, Mondays are definitely my rest time. I don't schedule any appointments. I don't schedule any dinner dates, lunch dates, unless I can absolutely help it. I save Mondays for my recovery day because I like to play pretty hard on the weekends now that I am living in recovery. And so when it comes to designing your rest place and space, this is what I suggest. Find a place where you can lay down flat. When we sit up in a chair, our lymph system isn't flowing because we're kind of we're either hunched over, so our digestion isn't running properly, our lymph system within our groin area isn't able to flow. So I personally find it easier and more restful when I'm laying flat or believe it or not standing. <laughs> if I'm at a social engagement, I can last a lot longer if I'm standing, oddly enough, because sitting is kind of uncomfortable for me. Um, but as I was originally diagnosed with valley fever, I was laying flat 80% of my day. The other 20% was probably eating, showering, and doctor's appointments. So. Um, I strongly suggest to find a quiet place where you can rest. Get good, quiet rest. And um, if you're at an event and you start to feel a little fatigued, it's good to maybe go reside somewhere where you can have a few minutes of quiet time. And better yet, if you can lay down flat for five or ten minutes, that's even all the better. I often will reside to my vehicle and put my feet up on the dashboard while everybody else is having a good time, but I'm in there for 10 or 15 minutes and then I can come back to the event. So um, that's what I do for rest. Um, next, what do we do when we've been diagnosed with valley fever? We want to feed our immune system. So vitamins are very important. Uh, amino acids, uh, one of the easiest way to get a quick vitamin, easy, go-to choice is a prenatal vitamin. My infectious disease doctor recommended it to me. He recommended it to my stepfather who had pneumonia years ago. So a prenatal vitamin really has a lot of your key nutrients, essential minerals and whatnot to help feed your immune system. So that is a good choice. I personally chose a gel cap that I found at CVS at one of the pharmacies. It was maybe 17 or 18 dollars a bottle. And in the beginning I took two a day, one in the morning and one at night. It does have a lot of vitamin B6, so it might wake you up a lot, which is kind of good when you have valley fever because we're always so fatigued. 
Um, so then along in my journey, I was given a, a list of things to try. And so um, as far as feeding the immune system, and a lot of these vitamins and minerals can be found in a prenatal vitamin, and they can also be found in protein shakes. I personally use Isogenics non-dairy, oh actually it's dairy-free, I know it's backwards for you, but Isogenics Isoline Shake Dairy-Free. I use the chocolate and the vanilla chai. Is it called vanilla chai? Yes, vanilla chai. This is really bomb. When I use these, I use half a packet. I, I put them in my blender with ice and berries and more chia seeds because chia seeds are really good for the immune system also. And so when I, I didn't start using these till three or four years into my recovery and I started noticing my nails getting thick and my hair was doing really good and so I thought, hmm, let's look at this. And so I read the back to see how many vitamins and minerals were in a protein shake. And, and you know, any protein shake is usually good. A non-dairy choice, non-yeast choice is best. And so, um, you know, Choose accordingly, do your research, check reviews. That's what I suggest when it comes to protein shakes. I know Isoline, Isogenics is a very well-rated, highly rated company, so I'm happy with them. And because I cut these in half, instead of using one serving, I use only half, and I add a bunch of ice and berries, so I'm kind of saving on the cost because one box is, I don't know, maybe $25 or something like that. I make it last twice as long. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this list and you can write them down as I go. And if you need to, you can always rewind the video if you miss anything, okay? So here it goes. Um, biotin, biotin is very important for hair and nails because the medication that we have to take when we are diagnosed with valley fever is very hard on the hair and nails. So biotin was suggested to me at 350 to 500 milligrams three times a day. I don't think I took it three times a day, but garlic, garlic capsules, three capsules twice a day after meals is best. Chai seed, one tablespoon per day. So as I was saying, I like to add them into my uh, protein shakes. My husband now throws chai seed in our stir fries. He throws them in our cucumber and tomato salads. I throw them in sauces to make them thick. You can also use chai seed as an egg substitute in baking. Okay, so to enhance the immune system, we also want vitamin C three times a day with meals. Um, I've read that buffered C is a really good option to take, but you wanna take buffered C with an MSM sometimes. Research that MSM. I'll go into that later because I don't currently use that yet. It was just suggested to me recently. Arginine, three grams with water on an empty stomach before bed. We only need to take that for a month is what this list tells me, but I'm happy to report that arginine is in my protein shake. And arginine is a very, very important mineral and minerals support our immune system. Vitamin B6, this is really good for women especially. It helps control anxiety. So vitamin B6, 20 to 50 milligrams daily, not a yeast source. Vitamin B12, 20 to 50 milligrams daily. And folic acid, 20 to 50 milligrams daily. Calcium pantothenate, which is vitamin B5, 500 milligrams daily. Selenium, which can be found in nuts. Uh, 50 milligrams daily. Now I will say when I found out that selenium was really high in Brazil nuts, I started eating a lot of Brazil nuts and some oatmeal and I overdid it. Once you take a nut out of the shell, it starts to grow fungus. We don't want to feed a fungus. I'm now allergic to nuts. I can't even eat almonds anymore without my face breaking out. <laughs> I'm very upset about that. But what do you do? Supposedly you can eat nuts out of the shell. Like if you shell a nut and then eat it, we're not supposed to have those fungal problems. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. I don't like the bumps on my face, so I don't know yet. Uh, magnesium, very important. Magnesium also helps with sleep. It helps with muscular pain and fatigue. And so this recommends 250 to 500 milligrams daily. 
I currently get a lot of my magnesium through my Epsom salt baths because I get magnesium through the skin as I soak for 20 minutes in my Epsom salt bath. Vitamin E, 200 IU daily. Vitamin A, which is beta carotene, 10,000 IU daily. Vitamin F, half a cup, oh, half a capsule. Whoa, oh, excuse me, it's not half. That is one to two. One to two capsules, 500 milligrams daily. That was vitamin F. Zinc, 50 milligrams daily. It says orotate form. Also, Rubio tea or any kind of herbal detox tea is good. Green tea, anything with no sugar. If you need it sweetened, I would suggest a little bit of honey. And so that is the list that I was given by some people that have done a lot of research in this area. Um, I'm not a doctor. I just share what I've used and what I've tried. So about for the first six months to a year, I stayed pretty strict to that vitamin diet, but I'll tell you what, just opening all of those bottles was exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> and I did have to get one of those little Monday through Sunday or Sunday through Saturday little plastic poppers where I put each each day in it because it was too exhausting to open every bottle every day. Trust me. <laughs> but as I said, um, with all those minerals and vitamins that I listed, you can check protein powders and other vitamin sources and see if those are in there and you know you're pretty good to go. So... Um, that is, we've talked about rest, we've talked about the importance of vitamins, and now also the number one, and you won't hear me say this enough time, the number one thing, okay, so number two, <laughs> rest is number one. The number two thing we have to do is keep our diet in check. We need to keep the sugar out of our diet. Sugar feeds a fungus. So do your research. You can also look into cancer diets. It's basically the same protocol. We want to keep our body low in acid. We want to keep it like around the alkaline level. Go ahead and re research alkaline diets and you'll find all kinds of suggestions. But definitely stay away from the sugar, processed foods, and toxins. And toxins can be found everywhere. Air fresheners, fabric softeners, don't use a fabric softener. Research it. It's really, it clogs your skin, it clogs your dryer. Fabric softeners are not good. So that's just my tip of the day. That's only my personal opinion. Do your research on that one. But um, we want to stay as low toxins as we can. That's why I use coconut oil to moisturize my skin. I use all natural hair products and I try and stick with all natural makeup if I wear any. I do use eyebrows and eyelashes. I don't use the foundation all over the face. I just use coconut oil and my um, Hylunia.com uh, high med, high med moisturizer and cleanser. I've shared that before, um, but it's at Hylunia.com. It's called high med. It's designed for uh, cancer patients for uh, radiation and chemotherapy because the damage that it does to your skin, it helps repair it. So um, I hope that helps. You've been diagnosed with valley fever, now what do you do? You rest, you get your diet in order, and you avoid sugar, you avoid stress, and be sure and feed that immune system, okay? So stay tuned for more. I will be sharing more as we go. I'm wearing teal today because that is the valley fever recovery color. When you ever you see a blue or a teal ribbon and you see it says survivor, it's usually because they are a valley fever survivor. So rock your teal and share, share, share information. Because as we network together and as we research, that's how we can heal. We can heal together, support one another, and encourage and inspire. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Feel free to share. Sherry D shares, so, so can you. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day. I wish you all the best of health. Bye-bye.